Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, Uh, I had a thing before where I could see how many people were in here. How did that happen? What? Brian M. Braganza. Braganza. Okie doke. Do -do -do. Uh, Yes. All right. So here's what's going on. Why do you think I'm writing another definition comment to improve capability? No. Do not like. Okay, uh, we'll come back to this nonsense for now. It's this nonsense. Um, so hello, and welcome. Um, I am going to be working on learning some Elm. Uh, my focus is on learning it. Uh, I'm hoping this will be interesting, but I get that it might not be. Um, watching someone else struggle with a new thing, maybe not the most interesting thing in the world to watch. You might learn something interesting from how I tackle learning it. But my goal here is not to teach you Elm because I can't, because I don't know it. Uh, my goal is to learn some Elm. So let's see how it goes. I want to see how many people are in the thing. How do I do that without this really slow pop-up? It's just that. All right, well, we'll do it from time to time. OK, I need to install Elm. So this is a new computer. Uh, have not. Set up Elm yet. Wish this were homebrew. Ba, 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 ba. Yes. Ten viewers. Sweet. Oh, I'm trying a new thing. I'm trying a reduced latency, a reduced delay, a reduced broadcast delay. Which I'm excited about because that was one of the things that annoyed me about the first broadcast was I kept trying to talk to people and the delay was so long it was sort of not feasible. So I'm trying this new beta feature, and hopefully that will work better. Did we get Elm? Maybe. Uh, afterwards, getting started. I want to get started. That's what I want to do. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Elm Maple. Hey. Oh, whoops. Oh dear, I don't have Node.js, and it makes me sad that I need to install it. Mature and dependable, much like myself. Um, can I homebrew Node.js? Herm. I come back to the. Oh my god, okay, well, never mind. Okay, well, 13 seconds. It's not bad. It felt more like 30 before, so. Their caveat was it may make more people have buffering, which is a bummer, but I think it'll be worth it. 
Please work no jazz. Yeah. Again, please ensure blah blah blah. Okay. Uh um, repo. Hey -o. I love the way this takes a while. Alright, cool. I got that one. That's exciting. Oop, no. You no. Come back here. Uh, uh. What? Stop. That's not what I'm hitting. Where is size up? Uh this is a new iMac, so all my a lot of my stuff is at a whack for it, which is unfortunate. Uh yeah, okay, I guess it is that. Alright, cool. Okie dokie. Uh, Mode mouse, yeah, I don't care. Okay, code. Okay, so my thought here is I still wish I knew how many people were here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Anywho. Uh, I gotta say, like, I was expecting, well, using Twitch, it feels like an MVP. Like, the UI is awful, basically. <laughs> well, not awful, but bad. Bad, 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 for the most part. Um, it's kind of shocking. Feels new. 16 viewers, this says 11 here, and this says not that number. How can I know? I'm Bane and I need to know. Hey Alex Booker, what's up? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Alright, well. Uh, I guess I will come back to this page every so often to find out the number. That sucks. Hey, that's getting closer. Does this update live? That'd be nice, but I have my doubts. Okay. Your list is going to show all the logged in people, so watching that account could be higher. This is why I like Twitch, is because people explain things to me. Okay, so uh, here's to, to the task at hand, ideally. Uh, I want to make Pong, and there's a blog post for making Pong. Uh, so I think this will be a good... Um, early task. My Elm background is very minimal. I have basically played with Elm for two hours uh, last week, and I have a little bit of Haskell, a little bit of Haskell background. Um, I've maybe done a handful of hours of Haskell as well. So that's where I'm coming from, but I'm hoping to... Oh wait, is this not... I want to see my stream. Is it not showing my face? I had a thing where it was showing my face. Um, maybe done a handful of hours. Wait a second. How do I... Oh! Uh, how do we get this one on there? Yeah, that's what I want. This guy. No face. I want my face. Oh, hey! Yeah, I got a lot of screen real estate. I can big in my face, I think. Awesome. Okay. Now we got face. Face for days. All right, so yeah, um, I liked this tutorial. It was promising. It looks like it's about 200 lines of code, maybe, which feels kind of uh, doable. Uh, I've, I'm going to do this for a couple hours. I'm not sure how long. We'll see how long my attention span lasts. Uh, but I'd like to I'd like to get Pong working, which and sort of just understand it as I go. So I'm not going to be writing much new code myself, but I kind of want to like move through this. And then if uh, if I do super well. I will uh, um, possibly try to rewrite this. So I believe this is Pong uh, on the left-hand side and the right-hand side with the ball going back and forth. And I want to make it one player uh, playing against the ceiling, basically. That's my rough plan. All right. So this is going to be me reading and typing code in and, and whatnot. So hopefully that will be enjoyable. All right. So here's basically the sales pitch around we're not going to mutate stuff and we're going to do this game in a functional functional way. 
la la la. All games will share the same underlying structure. This is super interesting. Like the Elm architecture, where the language and the community have basically decided on a way programs should get put together. I think it's really promising. I like that a lot. All right, we need to model inputs. We need to model the game. We need to update the game. We need to view the game. It may be helpful to think this is a functional variation on the MVC paradigm. Yeah. Okay. So here are four parts. We got our inputs. Why is that a link? Oh, because it goes to the section. Um, inputs like keyboard, passage of time. I like the time as an input. Uh, model holds information we need. Things like paddles, a ball, a palm court. Seems there's no way to refer to a palm court. That does not sound silly. Update. Start the game. Step functions. Step the game forward based on our inputs. Okay. Why do you think the language, why do, do I think that the way they put it together is so promising? Um, I have read through a couple documents, and, uh, or like a, a tutorial they have on the Elm architecture, and it just feels good. Like the, there's, all the arrows point in one direction. So the, the events or data all flows in one direction. And each piece, uh, the, the, res the responsibilities are very nicely divided. It feels like really sensible and si like fairly simple. And seems like it scales up to pretty large size because you can sort of you can nest these components that are all using the same sort of flow. And this is based on, you know, almost no experience with it. It just seems promising. It feels right. It feels good. All right. Um, you can find many different views. Blah 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 blah. Yes. If you'd like to make a game or application, use this structure. Yes, sir. I provide both a source code for Pong and an empty skeleton for game creation. Cool, that might be good. Which can both be a starting point for playing around with your own ideas. Let's get into the code. Yeah, this delay is much less. I like it better. Thanks, Twitch, for that option. Okay, inputs. Passage time and key presses. The keyboard, we need to keep track of space to pause and unpause. WS, whether one paddle one is moving down, up or down, paddle two. We can represent the state of a space key with a Boolean value. Uh, up and down can be represented by an integer. Up and down can be represented by an integer in there. So let's represent like this. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. So let's start dropping this into some place. Um, um, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Pong.l? I think is how you do this kind of thing. So, okay. Oh, I had I need a better Vim. Install Vim. Again, this is a new computer, so the Vim I have the Vim that came with uh, El Capitan, which does not support the system clipboard register. And I need that, especially if we are going to be if I'm pacing all kinds of crap. So just one moment while we get some new image in here. That was pretty fast. Is this the right version? No. Um. Um. Uh, well, please do that too. Anyway. Where do you put my bin? Local seller bin. How come this isn't in my path? It should be on my path. I don't understand. Maybe I can make it on my path if I go away. Bin? Yeah, yeah, I did it. Okay, cool. So, uh, too much new. Apparently this is not a thing anymore. Mouse mode. Alright, fine. Uh, hey, it works, I think. Yeah, cool. Okay, so this will be Elm. 
Okay, let's see now. Can I? Yeah. If I recall, it's an Ellen Project Bootstrapper thing. Oh, yeah, maybe I want to use that. I wish it told me here. Uh, empty skeleton for game creation? Uh, 404. Yeah, it's the whole game. How about that? God. <laughs> Whoops. This is pretty hard with Vimium and Dvorak. Alright, cool. Well, this is nice because I think this will tell me what I need to know. So, I don't even need to define a module if I don't want to, it looks like. So, I won't. Screw modules. We're going to do it. We're doing live. Okay. Put the right spec type. How do I make it indent like that? Also, holy crap, what is this indentation? Four spaces, and then this weirdness? Looks weird. But I will not judge a thing I am so new to much. From here, we'll actually define these inputs. Okay, so here's what we got so far. Type alias of input. This is something I find funny about. Um, I think this is Haskell and Elm. Uh, every tuple already has a type, and so... Or is this a record? Uh, every collection of things like this seems to already have a type, but this has type bool int int time already. And so we're actually making an alias for an existing thing. So it's like, oh, there's a new type called input, and it actually is just this thing. So heads up. Be aware. Okay, from here we have to actually define the inputs. So the, oh, this is an input. Okay. Every input is whether or not it's the space, which direction these paddles are moving, and time passing. Cool. Elm Reactor, yeah, we're gonna definitely do some of that. From here, we'll actually define these inputs. To keep track of the passage of time, we define delta using the FPS function. FPS takes a target frames per second and gives a sequence of time deltas that gets as close to possible as the blah blah blah. The time deltas will slow down gracefully. Hmm. Okay. This is, um. Oh. Actually, no. I want. I didn't do it. I would do. Uh, there you go. This is one of those things that stop. Um, I don't fully understand yet. Is the signal of things, but my understanding so far is basically a signal is a continually emitted uh, stream of values. I guess is kind of the closest thing. So this is a signal of time. So in seconds, FPS 35. So we're trying to update 35 times per second. I guess. Okay. Uh, now, we put that together, now we put that together with the keyboard inputs to make a signal representing all inputs. This feels a weird way to start. Like I'm surprised we're starting from the inputs kind of. I feel like we would want to model the world a little bit first, like put the paddles on the thing and have a little pong world and whatnot. Do -do 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 -do. But no. Okay, let's put it together anyway. Let's copy and paste. Failed. Better. What was that crap? No, there's tabs. Oh God, Evan, what are you doing to me, buddy? Okay. Uh, looks like uh, we're gonna just jump, jump. Huh? One more time. Okay. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. All right. So our input, now we put that together with keyboard inputs to make a signal representing all inputs. Okay, I've seen this a couple times. Uh, it seems like you always merge together all of the inputs for your program into one stream. And so you basically have one place for all those inputs to get processed or fold peed into the world. But input has type signal of input. Signal of input, which is that, okay. And sample Signal sample on delta, uh, Matt for, I think this is just getting rid of parens, basically, like take this stuff and jam it into here, I think. Um, signal map for, input map for, oh boy. Uh, input keyboard space. So these are our inputs. 
and we merge them all into one capital I input using this fancy map four function. And then I think we sample that on every delta, which I guess is 35 times per second, I think, is what I'm seeing. Uh, and what are our inputs? You hit the space bar, uh, map dot y. Don't understand that syntax yet. Uh, keyboard wazd, map dot y, keyboard arrows. Uh, so, oh, interesting. I wonder if dot y is like accessing the y component of the movement of WASD and the arrows. Don't know. We'll find out. Okay, so anyway, we're building this. Is space happening? Is paddle one going up or down? Is paddle two going up or down? And what's time changing? What, are, what, what is delta actually? Is it like a chunk of time? Not, not clear. We'll find out. Okay. Here we'll define the data structures that will be used throughout the rest of the program. This is the foundation of our game, so changes here will likely cause changes in both the updated and view code. Sounds reasonable. These models are rough specification for the game. They force you to ask, which features do I want? What information do I need for those features? How do I represent that information? Yeah, this is, in oops. This is something I um, have heard from Haskell programmers in particular, uh, that, and Alan is, basically Haskell Lite, as far as I can tell, um, is they spend a lot of time thinking about the data and the functions on those data, that da on that data, and also the types of that. And then once you have that all kind of loosely wired together, things are good and you're happy. Do not be afraid to spend a lot of time thinking about this. The most basic thing we need to model is the Pong court. This just comes down to the dimension of the court to know where the ball should bounce and where the paddle should stop. By the halfway points, which are commonly used. Okay, so these look like tuples to me. By tuples, I mean tuples. How do I get you to do this right? Uh, er, er. No. Yeah, okay. So, game with game height is 600, 400. This looks like Ruby kind of uh, multiple assigned sort of thing. Now we have a court. We need a, oh, I guess it's not really, it's just tuples. Anyway. Now we have a court, we need a ball and paddles, so we do. To find these data structures, so they share a lot of structure. Both have a specific, so thanks to structural typing in Elm, we can share some code later on. Structural typing, what's that mean? I don't know. I'm gonna try to compile the thing after this. Let's see if we're like okay so far. Oh, man. Uh, where was that? There. Are there two things between? lines between whatever. In an Elm style guide, sort of. Okay, let's go to Elm and how do you compile Elm stuff? Elm make Pong. What? I just do this. <laughs> I approve this plan. Awesome. Success. Hey. Uh, I think I'm supposed to ignore Elm stuff. That's like junk. Oops. X dependencies. Build artifacts packages. Elm package. Uh, JSON. Uh, did you go? Hmm. Funny. Uh, okay. Where to compile to? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. So we type check so far. That's cool. All right. So what do we have? Uh, we have type alias object A. So this is like a super generic. Yeah, I guess so. I'm guessing that's what start, that's what the structural typing bit is about. Records. What? Uh, organize related data in a way that's super easy to access and update. They fill a kind of role of objects in JavaScript and Java. Some key distinctions. Okay. Lightweight label data structure. Yes, okay, sure, access, a dot, ah, uh, there's that dot syntax. I was right. Um, okay, so, stuff. Here is how, Here we go. Uh, type alias object A equals, I guess, is a record type. 
It's very similar to Alan Record. What are points in that XML field? We get a type annotation. Origin has type, access float, wise float, and returns a uh, record. You can also use type aliases to make things more concise. Type alias, like we have over here, point, uh, is a record of XY. And then how about this point float? Sure. I guess this is destructuring here. Type alias. Defining extensible records. This use has not come up much in practice so far, although we appear to be using it in the dem demo, which is weird. Type alias positioned A equals is. Uh, what does this mean? Defining types that have at least certain fields that may have others as well. Positioned A is a record with at least an X and Y. Okay. I see. So a thing that's positioned has an X and a Y. This thing is named, has a name. I see. That means you can define records and have any subsection. Subsection, nice word. For example, lady is named, and named means she has a name, but she also has an age. Lady named Lois Lane age. Sure, dude named moving position. What? Wow. Um, so I guess that's how you say it has multiple whatevers. Cool. All right. I'm into it. So that looks like a terrible name. Um, I kind of want to change that. Let's be bold. Um, object. Could you get any more generic? Type alias. Um, call this game element. Just for kicks. Ouch. Name. That will certainly cause assert Chris. What's up, dude? Um, happy Sunday. Uh, I'm going to need your help to remind me that object is not real. Or just the compiler will tell me. All right, let's go. Let's keep going. Back to Pong. Structural typing. OK. Both have position and velocity, so thanks to structural typing, we can share some code later on. Cool. So now we're saying, hey, oh, I have a better idea for this. Why don't we call this, uh, this is more like a movable. It moves through the world. Uh, game element. Movable. Is that how you spell movable? Movable. Sure. OK. Oops. Um, right, OK. So this thing is things removable, which means I have an x position, a y position, a vx, and a vy. This is vectorable. I don't know. Uh, so a ball is movable, and that's all it has. And a player is also movable, but they also have a score. Player? I bet they also. I bet that means like paddle, actually, kind of. But someone who also Google's the spell check. Isn't that how spell check happens? Google is the best spell check. Both ball and player have a position of lie. Here we go. But notice the player has one extra field for representing the player's score. I noticed that. We also want to be able to pause the game. So between volleys, the user can take a break. Uh, let's see if we still compile. Uh, I'll make. Let's do a lap mapping. Reader T will be er, er, I'll make. Er, 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 er. Hey oh, now we're turning like ass. Also, I'm gonna pause the game between volleys. The user can take a break. That seems reasonable. We'll do it with unit type. Unit types are sweet, which you can later extend if we want more game states for blah blah blah. Okay, so let's do that. Type. State. Is there a useful um, Vim package that I should have? Anybody? For Elm? Anything that does something good? Ben, have you ever seen your failed code to compile yet? Uh, a little bit. Uh, that I saw. I got like one error intentionally, and it was very good and clear. And so I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to more errors. Love it. All right. We now have a way to model balls, players, and game state. We sure do. Ball, player, state. Catch are going. Cooking. So we just need to put it together. We can find a game that includes all of these things and then create a default game state. Yeah. All right. So again, this is an alias for an existing thing because it's a tuple. I like saying tuple. Uh, do we compile? 
that compiles too fast, actually. Why is nothing compiled? I changed stuff. Uh, I better, let's see if I can break this and make it fail to compile. Shoot! It's not actually compiling. What's going on? Uh, uh, I'll make this file. Aha! We do have errors. Elm, you lied to me. What's going on? What happened? I'm upset now. What's going on here? Okay, cool. Well, alright. So the problem is we need to import some stuff. What's that look like? Import time exposing. Perfect time. Keyboard is not in scope. Import. We're getting plenty of errors now, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see. Ryan, you are, yeah, good call. I see what you're getting at now. Fair enough. Okay. Wow. All right, what is happening here? Uh, how do I, I want to clear and end, I don't think. Is that what I want to do? That work. I think it did. Getting two errors. Okay, type annotation for default game does not match the definition. Blah blah blah. Blah 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 blah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if this will type check along the way. Kind of, probably not, huh? Type annotation is saying, oops. Uh, player has type score int vx float vy float x float y float. But I'm inferring the definition has this type player one is just an int, player two is just an int. Wait a second. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, is this the thing I, blow, I messed up? It is. I changed the thing. What did I change? Yeah, there we go. Player. And uh, hold up. Uh, I see. Okay. That seemed to work. Successfully generated index HTML. Oops. Looks good. We're making some progress. Oh, baby. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. All right. Compile one module. All right, so we are compiling. Groovy. Stop. Oh, shh. damn it. That's not what I want. Uh, pop out. Pop out, pop out, pop out. Okay, let's kill this one. Oh, God. Damn it. Uh, Noobing it so hard right now. No. Uh, Twitch. Non pro broadcaster at the moment here. All right, here we go. Cool. So we just added a bunch of code. What does this code do? Uh, we define a game that includes all the things and creates a default game state. So the game, okay, so we have kind of everything here. So a game. Oh, here we go. The game has a state, which is just one of the states, and this is what is state? Either player pause. State is a shitty uh, name again, I feel like. Mm, well, I think this should be like running true false. Let's come back to that that way. Uh, make this type running. We'll see like how this refactoring goes for us later. Ah. I'm trying to yeah, 
act like learn actively here by seeing if the names make sense and trying to build in to change them. Like we change the movable thing up here. Looks so good. Yeah. All right. Okay. So we have our game, which has the state, which says if the game is running or not. We have a ball, which is a movable thing, which has all of these things in it. We have a player one, which is a, a movable thing with also a score, and a player two. So that is the full. I think that's the full. Yeah, that's the whole thing for the game. Everything can be encapsulated in this piece of, with this data right here. We also have a function that takes a float and returns a player. Uh, x, x, y, y, v, x. Okay, so this sets the players x. That puts everything else to zero. And the default game is paused, and it has a ball in the middle. Uh, Vx, Vy moving some direction. Uh, 20 minus half of half of minus 20. And this just throws people on x. Oh, I see. I think this is like determines where the paddle goes. Let's open that thing back up actually. Uh, Elm Pong. Uh, Why is this making noise? Oh, because I'm streaming my own video. Good job. Dum dum. Okay, uh, so I bet if we change the default game. Uh, This moves one of these paddles to a different place. Hmm. Not what I anticipated. as to how that, why isn't this doing anything? Now you're here, oh, did it wrap? Hmm, my, my knowledge is, my understanding of this is incomplete, but I think I got the gist. Next, next thing. Oh, I forgot, my chat is gone. Hey man, you're awesome, thank you. Default game is the starting state, so we pause the game, place the ball in the middle of the screen, put the paddles on either side of the court. Uh, 20 minus half width and half width minus 20. Sure. Okay. Cool. Update. So now we've got our thing with recompile, I think, even. Now this is kind of like a weird... I sort of understand why he chose this method for the, the tutorial, but I feel like I would have rather... Um, um, Started with something I could see, even if it was just like, let's model the ball all the way through. Let's do the model and the update and the view for the ball, just so I could like kind of work incrementally. Because it's cool that I've got all my data all set up, and that actually might be how you do this normally. But in terms of like early payoff, it would be cool to get something earlier. Uh, how do I unnotify? You to not bother me. Uh, how do I stop that? Mute. Stop. Cool. Do I have that open? Is there an, Oh, yeah, here. That's, hello. Where do I do this? Turn on notification notification center. Where is it? Shouldn't it be here? In notifications you can scroll up to turn on. What? Oh Jesus. That's way too hidden. Good lord. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Things I'm learning about streaming. Okay. 
So anyway, let's do some updates. Uh, this sort of sucks. We're still not going to get any... Let's render this whole thing. Can we just make this all go? Probably not. Oh well. Um, or option click the button to quickly toggle it on and off. Ooh. Hey, that's handy. I mean, it's super not clear, but... Just turn. Cool. Okay, cool. Well, alright, let's do our updates. Let's do it. Staff function more minimal. Okay, so our game data structure holds all the information needed to represent the game. At any moment in this section, we will define a step function that steps from game to game. Moving the game forward as new inputs come in. Got it. To make our step function more manageable, we can break it up into smaller functions. This next chunk of code defines some not so interesting helper functions near and within for detecting collisions. And step V for safely stepping velocity. Wow. What does that mean? Let's paste it and then read it together. The more you know. Oops. That was me. Uh, hi, all of you. Move that way again. Okay. That's kind of hard to read. I lost my color scheme somehow. In the bin. In the new machine. I don't know why. Jelly beans is not a thing. Jelly. Plug in. Now take jelly beans. So like I should just install. Jelly beans. Oh, it's because I don't have enough colors on my terminal for some reason. Anyway, we'll worry about that later. All right, new functions. Here's what we got. We got our n and m near each other. Specifically, are they within c of each other? Float, a float, and a float returns a bool. Take n, a c, and an m. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. I guess. We're having debate. We were having debate at work about like Haskell. Uh, debate, just discussion about Haskell's like single letter uh, functional programming, single letter variable names in general. And it's not so bad. Like the scope is really small, and you know the type. So it's kind of like, yeah, I guess I can figure out what these are. All right. So is n minus c and n n okay? So are they within c of each other? Let's not worry about this one. This looks boring. Next is the ball within a paddle. Is the ball within a paddle? Take a ball and a player. See again, it's not a player. I mean, it kind of is a player. A player is a paddle. A player. I feel like this is overloaded. Return a bool. Takes a ball and a player. Near player x eight. Ball x. So this is is this is this saying is it within eight pixels? I imagine. And this and near player y. 20 ball y? Uh, is it within 20 of the player y? And I'm guessing this 20 of the player y is based on something like the player thing being a certain number of units tall. Because the player y, I think, is represented as a single point probably in the middle of the paddle. And the paddle extends, yeah, in probably 10 units. Probably maybe pixels, 10 pixels in each direction. That looks bigger than 10 pixels. Maybe. Is this a canvas? What is this even? This is canvas. How are you doing, canvas? I just see this language. Yeah, me too. Um, all right, so this is like, are you hitting the paddle? And this is change the direction of a velocity based on collisions. Change the direction of the velocity based on collision. Okay. So we take a float and a bool and a bool and a float. Yeah, we do. Float and a bool and a bool and a float. So V, I guess, is our velocity. Bool of lower collision, bool of upper collision. I haven't seen this before. This syntax, what is this anyway? If lower collision, then abs V. If upper collision, then. 0 minus abs v, otherwise v. I guess this is just how you do it. How do you do an f and elm? Elmif. Uh, the uh, learn x and y 
thing is a really nice uh, reference so far. If Okay, so that looks like a normal if. Is this like a case that we got here? Like an else if or something? I find uh, if space pipe space pipe space. Those are the only pipes. Uh, looks like a garden Haskell. I'm guessing so or something. Uh, I, don't, I, can't, I can't find an example in here. That's surprising. Um, Syntax. I haven't found this to be amazing, but let's see. No. See, this is. I understand this, the case. Did I screw that up in the pasting? No. It doesn't even compile. I'm looking for one of the following things. An expression or a white space. So take one error in the job. Is there an error in this? Hold on, let's go look at the real one. Uh, what did the step be? Where'd it go? What? I wonder if this is syntax that doesn't exist anymore. I bet it is. I bet this was like an old thing that was taken from Haskell and used to exist back in, <laughs> yep, back in then. Yeah, that's what I think too. Uh, how do I, this is blog. Can I make a pull request to this blog? All code for this site is open source. Pong. Making Pong. Oh, baby. I can make a pull request. I'm going to do it. Here we go. Uh, yeah. Boo! How do I. I'm on a branch. I swear there's a way to do this. How come you stop letting me do this thing? I need the. No, no I'm not come back to that. Uh, I feel like I can do this for readme. I can just click this button and then make a quick pull request. Uh, how? I want to make like an actual pull request. I wonder if somebody already has this. Unreported. Crazy. Oh god, I need this thing. What gestures did I use? Uh, I don't want to do this right now, but I do. I'm getting so sidetracked. All right. Um, Let's fix this. Anyway, I want to fix this damn thing. Uh, kind of go forward. Oh, I didn't want to do that actually. Uh, I actually want to.
All right, let's just steal it, you know? Did we do it right? Step B, lower collision, upper collision. Needs to look like that. Lower collision, abs V. Upper collision, negative abs V, otherwise V. Looks right to me. Uh, 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 updates if uh, conditional. Update conditional Elm change guard clause. I'm betting this is what happened. Uh, I'm betting it went away. Um, I guard clauses. It's not a guard clause. It's like uh, Elm if if some conditional syntax change. I'm trying to find the root cause just so I can. Um, so I can say why I'm making this change. Oh shoot! What is this? Oh, oh hold on. It's simply a nicer way to write nested if expressions. So the following expression can be used anywhere, not just definitions if. That and that existing guarded systems is converted. Step key n. Huh. So this is 07 saying that that is a thing. I wonder if there's a later thing. But now we know it's called. It's called multi way if. Oh, what happened here? What happened? I wish there were an actual, ooh, um, elm dot, oop, this is not where I should be, elm, what? This is interesting. I feel like this is like almost just kind of maybe dull. Max Goldstein, aren't you in here? Am I crazy? No, you're right here. Never mind. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Um, any particular reason? Oh, it's just exciting. Um, I might need to add some um, JavaScript to uh, my side project, briefs.fm, and um, I don't want to write JavaScript. I'd rather write Elm. So I'm looking for a JavaScript placement, and Elm is my candidate. Type faster. Yes, use if then else change. Could be cool. I hope it gets accepted. Sure, as long as the patched version compiles. <laughs> no, I'm gonna make it not work in my pull request. Thank you for that. Uh, let's see if it compiles though. We can figure this out. Uh, where do I steal it? Where do I steal it? Files. Magical. Okay. Thank you for the help. For the help, Max. Bye. I'm contributed. I'm core. Yeah, I'm in time. Hi all. Hey, Dav Server. Uh oh, I'm contributor. Yeah. I got uh, that'd be sweet if this got merged. I'd be an Elm contributor. That'd be sick. I mean, this is usually where I end up contributing to things, is like the blog posts. But hey, somebody's got to do it. Cool. Alright, back to work. We've done our good deed for the day, though, you know? Alright, so here we have this function that changes the direction of velocity of baseline collision. So if it blows up, if it hits the bottom, then absolute value of the velocity. It's interesting that V is just a single float. I always think of velocity as a direction and a speed. I don't know what it is if it's just V. And All right, here we are. So that's kind of like the plumbing for making the ball bounce around and seeing if it's colliding with anything. Now that we have the boring functions, we can define step functions for balls and paddles. Notice that step obj, hmm, not a fan of that name still, which uses structural typing to share code between step ball and step player dot step obj. Changes an object position based on its Velocity. So step ball and step player can just focus on how their velocities change. Mm. Let's read some code and see what you're talking about. This hurts my soul. I'm curious, does Vim know how to format this stuff? Nope. That'd be cool. Anybody used a, oops, didn't plug in that actually knows? Yeah, step player? It's weird, it's like, 
this guy's name is Ivy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool out. We can embed it in this. Where does this actually go? Just obj. Uh, under the E of step obj. Okay. Should have all wait, one, two. So do you do two steps for ifs and four for things like that? Four, 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 four. And then we have this. One, two, 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 two. Uh. No. Okay. Let's see. Oh, we don't even compile. This is handy. I'm looking for the following things. An equal sign. White space. That's pretty badass. I think there's even more syntax. That means this doesn't compile. That's kind of shocking. And I guess this blog post is really old. I'm happy that they are making I'm happy to see Elm make breaking changes, but I'm surprised no one has bumped into this already and fixed it. Look how big that cursor is. Okay. The multi if thing again. Uh, I think this is different. I think this is like, um, I think this is supposed to be a pipe. No, object. Yeah, I think this just becomes, uh, how else do we do this? So the record update syntax, I believe, which apparently has also changed. It feels like he, he originally started with, or Elmer originally started with like accepting sort of Haskell type syntax, uh, and now it does update. Yeah, okay. Look at this error, look how good this is. I'm looking for an equal sign or white space. That's pretty badass, because I think we can just fix this like this. And then, yep, where is that? Also look at this, just the one single line number. It's pretty badass too, I like it. Damn, Elm, you friendly. That almost works. Uh, to here, no. I'm trying to do this fancy thing. There we go. Oh, so close. And here. Uh, wow, well, a lot of this, huh? So, can I replace all of this with this? Oh, there's that object again, which we decided was actually movable. Movable. Object movable. Hey, I gotta say, uh, I feel pretty. <sighs> yeah, why don't we also fix that in our pull request? Um, yeah, let's make our pull request bigger. Um, where was our pull request? Here it is. So let's actually, uh, we'll call this uh, update syntax, actually. Um, and let's go ahead and pong. Yes. OK, so I think I can just replace all that. And it might just work. I still don't even know if this all compiles. This is frustrating because it might not even be done. We might, not, we might not even be done. And I can't easily compile this. I imagine there's some handy function that will actually let it compile this, but I don't know what it is. No, I bet there must not be, because it doesn't work. So if this, you could compile this blog post, it probably would not have been broken. OK, update for 1.16. OK, this is actually the pod pull request we want. Oh, come on. You know what I mean. Oh, do I have a uh, brew install hub? Oh, hub browse. That would go. This is the actual pull request I want. Let's take a quick look and see if we have it mustered up. Seems reasonable. Uh, update syntax for open one six. Good enough. Uh, yeah, there might be more. We do not know. Let's 
So let's see if more stuff breaks <coughs> as I copy and paste it. I can't believe I'm the only person who's done this. It's shocking. Did 016 just come out? Um, yeah, I guess I should use number, huh? There we go. That's better. So let's try it. Relative number. Set number. Why not? It's a reasonable question. Let's read the code we just stole. Okay. Step the position of an object based on its velocity at a time step. Based on its velocity at a time step. So you take a time and something that is movable and return a new movable. I think that name's better. If that were object, what the fuck? My name's better than yours. All right, step object takes time, and then we destructure the, um, is it you, buddy? Uh, the movable. X, Y, V, X, A, Y, and then we update the movable where the X becomes X plus the V, X times time, and Y becomes, yeah, okay, that looks like physics to me. I think I got it. I don't love step obj. Or like, how about, uh, tick, or like, uh, update position. Isn't that better? Step, uh, let's do this. Step obj, update position. Yeah, I gotta tell you, being able to compile after each of these makes me feel pretty sure I haven't screwed up. That's kind of cool. Static typing, you know? Type systems. Uh, okay, so that's our update position. It takes time and movable and updates it based on the tick. Move a ball forward, detecting collisions with either paddle. It takes a time and a ball and a player and a player returns a new ball. Um. So, we destructure the ball and we have both players. If not, ball.x, bam, near zero, half width. So I'm pretty sure that means take this value and stick it in this function. But let's do a verify real quick. Uh, er, er. Ooh! Man, we're having some trouble with syntax today. Um, Thank you, Davsir. I am finding it instructive. Uh, Elm syntax. I'm trying to like, to me it's the right thing to do, you know? It's, um, ugh. Other people will be confused if I'm confused, so why not do it? Okay. Let's see if Elm has a thing for this already. Hey, okay, cool. Use that to reduce parentheses usage. There, the alias is for function application. Right there, so f arrow x equals f of x, x that way f equals f of x. Okay, so yeah, I was right. So take the ball x position and pass it into near zero, half width, and then here's where the x goes, I believe. It must be. Because we're doing currying. Near zero, half width, where is near? Uh, here, zero, half width. Um, I think this is detecting when the ball goes off the edge. You take the x and put call zero. What does near actually do? I don't think I understand that yet, really. Does that do current like Haskell? I think it does. Uh, yes, I understand. It. Too often, even the docs are append only. What does that mean? Does that mean my pro request is not going to get merged and we're just going to keep this the wrongness around? Please say no. Uh, near. Uh, N, C, and M. Yeah, I could get that you don't need to say a lot about it, but okay. So, N becomes zero, 
c becomes half of the width, m is the, well, the ball's x position. I see. So our 0 is 0 within half the width of the ball. 0 within half the width of the screen of the ball's position, which I I think that means it's off the edge. I'm pretty sure that's the ball. So like, I would extract this into a function called off screen. Let's do that. Um, mm -mm. If not, oh, if it's not on screen, actually, I think is what it is. That not only the tutorials are outdated, but often the official docs as well. So people are up documenting the new stuff and don't update the old docs. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, but that's bad. I think this is on, if this means, I think this is called ball on screen. Let's do ball on screen uh, has type, uh, we need. Yeah, stop. X, and we need, no, we need a, uh, what is ball.x? Int, float. Uh, so it takes a float, and a, uh, uh, returns a bool. Maybe. Ball on screen equals ball on screen of, uh, X and still don't know if I, how many things I should be going in. One, two. Uh, so we're gonna call if ball on screen of ball dot x. I think that's how that works. What about ball to bool? Yeah, sure. That's a better idea. We'll pull it out from the from the thing. Ball. This can't be right though, right? Like if it's on screen, then set the x and the y to zero, zero? Otherwise, update it by stepping. So I feel like this is actually if ball is off the screen. I should just like figure this out, but I don't know, I'm just charging ahead anyway. Ugh, don't do that. Oh God, I hate you. I don't know how many things to indent. Vim really wants me to do two. Okay. Um, what is this? Uh, not ball dot x or er, er, zero. And now we'll see if it's right by trying to compile it. Wah wah wah. Mm, x is ball. Kind of find a variable ball on screen. <laughs> That's because it's actually ball on screen. Well, it compiled. I wonder if it worked. What's the plugin setting for dots until the cursor you have there in Vim? Um, it's uh, some sort of some sort of thing I set. Ah, it's actually not a plugin. It's that I think. Uh, no. Uh, uh, there's some sort of setting for like show me show white space. Uh, display extra white space. Here you go. That it's on line 335 in my VimRC, which is in on GitHub. Enjoy or somewhere close. Let's char maybe something like that. Yeah. All right, so we compile. Cool. We may have broken it horribly. I don't know. If the ball's off screen, then reset it. Maybe we broke it. I hope we didn't break it. Otherwise, update the position. Otherwise, update position T. <sighs> la, 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 la. Take the time and immovable. So, does this get. 
So we're calling the function update position with the time and then a movable um, which updates the x and y. And this updates the v and x. Did this, did this say something about this? Step ball. Use a structural time to share, go to step ball and step, step player to step up. Not by v or zero half of ball dot x. Ooh, fancy. Oh, wait, oh, hi, weird. Stop. Not by of near zero. That would be fancy. <gasps> oh, I see. Hey, thanks for the suggestion. All right, so step ball is doing some stuff. I don't quite understand it. I can't, I'm not clear, like, I guess, does this happen? Yeah, this makes a new ball. And we pass that new ball to update position with the time, which then, yeah, so we update the VX, or update the velocity here, and then we update the position here based on the velocity. Right, okay. Um, notice with step object, which uses, what was step object? That was this update position. Yeah, agreed. Notice the step objects uses structural typing to share code between step ball and step player, which we haven't looked at yet. Yeah, correct. Uh, and step player to step object changes the position based on its velocity. And step player can just focus on how the velocity has changed. Yeah. All right. Let's look at this last function that we just added here. Update position ball. Well, let's just look at this one real quick. If it's off screen, then reset it. Otherwise, update position time, where update the ball, the velocity becomes this, where we step our velocity with our current velocity, and then if the ball is within the player, and if, okay. So we update the x velocity depending on whether or not you're contacting the thing, and we update the um, y velocity depending on if you've hit the top or the bottom of the, th of the screen. Oh. Uh, is that true? Oops. So, does it bounce off the bottom? It does. Okay, cool. So in that case, I feel like we should have functions for these two, uh, like ball um, at screen uh, ball. Ball returns a bool and ball at top and bottom of the court of ball equals uh, uh, y less than seven minus half. Uh, what's y? Oh, it's the thing we pass in. So y is just the y position of the ball, but we can pass the whole ball in if we want. So ball dot y less than seven minus half height. Uh, or or. Hmm. We're gonna be calling this twice, which feels goofy. Oh no, wait, you need the players to update the velocity, but not the positions. Uh, ball at y. Half height. We might be breaking this horribly. I hope not. So let's call. Goofiness, I know, but 
we could change stuff V later. I probably should have not changed stuff until I knew it worked. This is probably we could be going off in the wrong into the wrong land. All right. Um, step player four, making sure it does not fly off the courts again. Player not uh, player. Is that so hard? Um, takes a time and an int and an int and a player. Returns a player. Time, direction, points, and player. Get position. Time, player, change the, change the y velocity of the player based on the time. Ooh, clamp. Interesting. Y prime becomes clamp 22 minus half height, half height minus 22, player prime dot y. Ooh, you can reference the new thing we made. Okay. Uh, what is 7? <laughs> yeah, fair question. Uh, I don't know. The number of units that the thing is tall? Magical constants. I'm guessing the whole screen is 14 units tall or something? Maybe it's, oh, maybe the ball is seven pixels wide, and so it's when it gets down to here or something. It's off the screen once it, the middle of the ball hits it. Oh, hi. What's up? Yeah! Chapow! Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was cool. That was fast, too. Be fast. Be cool. All right. Sweet. Where do I get on a contributor list? <laughs> um, yes. Um, I am, yeah. No more macro. Cool. That was great. Thanks, Evan. I'm a contributor. Hashtag? Is there an official hashtag I can use now? Show her a t-shirt. I should order a t-shirt. There should be t-shirts. That'd be an interesting um, open source thing. Contribute to my project, and I will send you a t-shirt. I would wear an Elm t-shirt. Are there Elm t-shirts? Anybody? Elm Lang t-shirts. This is my new business. Hmm, Elm logo monochrome. Oh, yeah. If I wear it, will I look like that dude? That'd be cool. Cool. Maybe soon. I will do this. Thanks for the okay. You can see how distractible I am. I bet I know what clamp does. Um clamp. How do I can I ask Elm what clamp does in here somehow? Clamp. <laughs> well, it's obvious. Takes a number and a number and a number, returns a number. Uh, is there a way to get like documentation for the function? Elm documentation in Apple. How do I? Document. No. $25 is a bargain for a t-shirt if it makes you feel cool when you wear it. Okay, let's actually find out what Clamp does the hard way. I need to get a dash package of Elm Docs. Uh, Clamp, where are you? Clamp. If x is less than 100, yeah. If it's between it or yeah, exactly. That's what I thought it was. Very cool. So, if we do clamp, uh, how's it go? 100, 200, uh, 30. 
Yeah, like, oh yeah, because we're below 100. We go to 1, 2, so we go to 2, 1. Yeah, cool. That's a handy function. Uh, okay, so we lock the y down to... See, again, like this This would be a great thing to extract into a function or whatever, however I should, like def like a, maybe a type or something. Half height, minus 22, 22 minus half height. All these like magical constants floating around. Maybe I'll refactor this more once I know a little bit more Elm. Maybe Evan will merge it again. Two-time Elm contributor. Hashtag. It's awesomeness. All right, so we clamp that, and the player prime dot y. Score prime is the player score plus their current points. Interesting. In player prime update y equals y prime score equals y prime. Let that in that. Okay. Okay. And we are compiling. And people are still watching. So I'll keep talking. Next. This update bit's pretty boring. <clears throat> oh, oh, but we're almost there. We're almost there. We're getting there. And I sort of kind of understand most of these functions so far. Oh, you liars. Don't work anymore. Uh, if I refresh this page, what if it were already deployed? How cool would that be? would have been the coolest. Maybe you're killing me right now. Okay, let's do this. Taps and spaces thing. Which never happens to me normally because no one uses tabs. I swear this never happens to me. One second. There. Yeah. Uh, what was that new then? If thing, then that. Else if then. Okay. So if uh, here we are. If thing then play. Oh, fam, fuck you. No. Oh my god. Gotta fix these things. Else if that painful. Pretty sure the newest compiler would eject tab characters? Oh, that's so good. Good call. There's just so many good design decisions in, in, in Elm. I'm, this is why I feel like it's so promising. I'm pretty damn impressed with the pragmatism. Uh, what did I have to replace this with that? Uh, I bet I know why. Holy long function. Good lord. No comments, of course. It's obvious. Okay, now that we have step ball and step player functions, we can define a step function for the entire game. Here we're stepping our game forward based on inputs from the world. Is there no full P in this? Surprising. I feel like that was like the core. Is there no full P? Oh, here we go. That's next. That's our victory lap. Okay, step game takes all the input, and a game returns a brand new game. 
So basically it uses all the machinery built up so far to advance the game state based on the input. Yeah, let's see if this is true. Uh, Vim, fuck you, refresh new version. Yeah. Uh, Elm support for Vim. Yeah, improve syntax highlighting. Uh, improve indentation. Yeah, we need this. Okay. Uh, bundle. We need this. I and you. Uh, ha! <laughs> this is what I was doing some sort of JavaScript. Oh. Lambda toast, elm.bim. Is that what I have already? Elmcast, elm bim. Hmm. Elm bim. Score one slash score two RIP for extract method. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'll check that out. Ooh. Ooh. We already have one. Not super maintained. 152 stars, 74 stars. Last update. April, last update, 24 days ago. Well, I got the indentation. I'm using this one now. It is not working so hot well, so let's try it. We're going to do elmcast elm bin. Elmcast elm dash bin. Let's give it a try. Serious. Why do I need that? Come on, get home. <laughs> okay, it worked, I think. Uh, hold on. Still compiling like a palace fast, too. So it's all cast. Uh, I deleted the only based annotation bullet point. Yeah, thank you. I posted a video, so it's Elmcast. Yeah. Elmcast. Oh, is that a thing? Elmcast.io. Why not Elmcast? This is a two second video. Huh. I guess this isn't launched yet. Oh, hi. Errors are good. Cool. Thanks for. Oh, oh! I can make it from the editor. Say. Podcast. Oh, did I screw it up? Is that what's going on here? Um, everyone's telling me something. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so if we get rid of that. Do I need to capitalize? I'm angry if I do. Uh, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is the worst. Something is screwed up with my keys. Why does it want me to do that? Oh, God. I think I can't install the plugins right now. Uh. Oh, what if you fucked off? There we go. Do I have Elm? Whoa! Oops, didn't mean to do that. All right, cool. Don't look at my passwords. Elm dash, am I still fucking it up? Jesus. Um, I should have just copied and pasted it. Where'd it go? I'm casting it down, that's been Jesus. Please. Yes. Thank you for saving me from myself. Well, it does highlight a little differently now. What can we do now? Anything awesome? Many of the features enabled by default. I'll make calls out make with a given file. No file is. I'm test. I'm REPL. I'm error detail. Oh, yeah! 
show the digital current animation picture today. Cool. Let's see. Let's make that work. Uh, it makes it new. Well, let's first let's build this real way. Um, I'll make. Cool. And if I say that. I feel like there's more good and good error message that I want to see that it's hiding. Is it on error detail? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well done, plugin person. I like your thing. So now let's actually map meter T to be I'll make. Groovy. Huzzah, indeed. Only took me 11 tries to type to add a single plugin to Vim. I've been using Vim for 15 years. <clears throat> that's great. Uh, I want to come. I want to. Yeah, that's cool. Thanks, Comcast.io. Good, good content marketing. Hey, I want to make more videos. I will watch them. I'll even pay for them. Who runs this? Anybody? Anybody know? Okay. Distractable, distractable guy. Okay, so here's our almost our grand finale. We now take an input in game, return it to a brand new game. So we destructure some stuff. And then the score one, if the ball X is over the half width, then one. Score two, if it's beyond negative half width. Uh, oh yeah, right for extract method. I see what you're saying right there. Agreed. Uh, but let's not do that right now. We'll come back to that. State prime. If space, then play. If score one is not equal to score two, then pause. That I don't get, actually. Is this like for when it first boots up? Otherwise, state. State comes from state is paused by default, right? So yeah, state is either play or pause. And our default game state is pause. So when we come in here, we can put in game the state prime if space, where does space coming from? Oh, it's from the input. I see. If we press the space bar, then turn it to play. If where's the square one coming from? Oh yeah. If we're off either edge. Oh, I see. They can only be both zero if. Oh wait, no. Hmm. Zero versus one and one versus zero. Ah. Then someone scored. Yeah, you're right. So the score is not equal, then pause. But why? Why is it pause if someone scored? Is that how the game actually works? Uh, what would you compile? Oh, it does pause. That makes sense. Sort of. So after every score, the game stops. Yep, okay, I got it. Okay, so like this person scored, this person didn't, so this is one, and this is zero, and then we get to here, and they're not the same, so then. So, this I will extract. Someone scored. Can't find variable, someone scored. No way! Someone scored. Test type. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe I do actually want to extract these things instead. Oh no, it comes down here. Uh, player one prime equals. Yeah, okay, so we do need to have the new score come back. So 
So why don't we just take the ball? Well, hmm. Let's you pause again with space, though. I think state would be better as pause. Cool. Does that mean it doesn't pause? It makes the score 1-1? One, one? Yeah, that's a good... No, because this is like the updated score, the, the score for this tick, basically. So like only one person scores at a time. So either the ball is on your end or it's on my end. So either I get one or you get one, but never both. I would argue this this is a bit confusing logic-wise, because considering it confused us. Yeah, it's a score for the round. Not hundred, not super clear. I think there are a couple things that could be uh, that could be clearer about this example. It's pretty old, so I'm I'm not surprised it has some room. For growth. Okay, I think I get it. Maybe let's extract. Maybe let's extract some stuff anyway. Uh, or maybe not. Let's come back to this. Let's have a little note. Let's extract this later. New ball is if we're paused, just return the ball. Otherwise, step the ball. Yeah. Otherwise, move the ball. Sure. And then update the player by updating the players. And yeah, 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 yeah. And then we update the whole game. And so our function, as a whole, takes all, takes the input and then the game and returns a new game. Okay. Seems right. It even compiles. Magical. Let's come to here. Finally, we put together the impulse, the default game, and the step function to define game state. This is like the magical part of Elm. Well, there's a million magical parts, but this is kind of interesting to me in Elm. I don't fully understand it yet, but I'm starting to get the gist, which is the this thing generates the game over time, like a signal of, of what the game state is. So it's constantly sending out the, what the new version of game is, I think 35 times per second effectively by folding up um, this function returns a new game. So we start with this base case, and um, we know how to f incorporate the step game and input. How do those go together again? How do those go together again? Um, fold yeah, totally. Here we go. This full P has type A and a state and a state. Oh, a function from A and state to state, which is step game. So A is input and state to state. Um, and also a signal of A, right? So it takes input and a game and returns a game. Wait, the first argument is, oh yeah, the first argument, so there's four arguments. The function, the initial state, a signal of the input, and outputs a signal of the state. So in our case, A is um, uh, input, capital I input. So here, whoops. So our first thing is a function of input to game and game, which is step game. So that type matches. I'm surprised this is not like on its own line or something. Um, let's just copy this over. But because I think I get it. So old P has to type this. I'll leave it over here. Okay, so this is a uh, step game, which takes a input, which has type input, goes to game, and returns a game. Um, this is a default game, which 
chess type game. This is um, this is not valid syntax, obviously, by the way. Uh, a signal of of input, which is our uh, input here, input function. Where did input come from? Oh, here we go. Signal of input. So a constantly generated thing of inputs, <laughs> and then returns us a signal of game. That's pretty cool. So to continuously produce new versions of the game, or to new like snapshots of the game, we pass in a function uh, that takes an input in a game that basically steps the game forward one click or one tick based on this input. We pass it in the initial state of the game, and we pass it in a signal of inputs to feed. And then out comes the signal of games. Cool. And it compiles even, so that's cool. Uh, all right. About time. Finally, we get to see anything, literally anything happen. <laughs> so, because we are still, I think, uh, oops. Open index. Still very disappointing in terms of display. Uh, it would be cool if that. Again, I would rewrite this, I think, if it were me to put things on the screen over time. I think even just starting with like the ball on the screen, and then the pa and the paddles on the screen, and then the maybe like start moving the ball, and then maybe have the ball collide with paddles. And like I get that, like maybe you wouldn't do that if you're like a legit functional programmer data type kind of person. But wouldn't you? Wouldn't you want to like slowly build stuff stuff up over time and watch it work? It's like I would. Okay. The view is totally independent of how the game updates. It is based only on the model. Okay. This means we can change how the game looks without changing any of the update logic of the game. That seems good. You can be as fancy or as elaborate and elaborate as you want in the view, but I will try to keep our display fairly simple. The most interesting thing about this code is that the displobge function allows us to share some code for rendering balls and players. Cool. The rest of the code is more about drawing the punk court and displaying scores and instructions nicely. Who are dar? Okay, I think we can just. We're getting it. We're coming down to the moment of truth. You realize, right? Like things are about to either work or definitely not work. Oh, jeebs! What? Oh, I'm missing. Uh, how do I get that error detail? How um, error detail? What? Help, help. Uh, how do I get the detail? Error. Help, error detail. Oh, I see. That is the error detail. I see. I thought Vim was yelling at me. Okay, so I need to import some stuff. I'm guessing it's this stuff. <laughs> Better. Uh, text. Anything? Yes. Text at height. All right. Uh, what am I missing? Let's, let's sort this, you know. Uh, a bunch of animals around here. Color, graphics, collage, reference element, keyboard, text, time, window. Hmm. Space. Are there still issues in this thing? No. Mono space. Mono space is not used in this example. I'm guessing it doesn't work anymore. Or maybe it does. Oh, mono space. Mono spache. Mono spache. Where are you? You are in text. Hmm. Did I not import? I think I have to do this. 
trying to work. Uh, can I find type object? What? Um, whatever that's about. Uh, movable. Oh, I thought I fixed this. What? Text.monospace, text.thumbstring, I see. Let's just expose everything. Hey! Okay. You're all very quiet. It's weirding me out. Um, how do I know you're not plotting something? You go away. See, this is okay. Jesus, there's so many little UI things in Twitch that feel off. Feels like an MVP. Twitch, the real MVP. All right, what do we got? These are some values. This shared function for rendering objects. Uh, I'm going to call this display. Um, Shape. <laughs> awesome. Uh, display movable, movable in a shape. Oh, a shape in a form? What's a form? Here. It's not used anywhere. What? Oh, it's just actually, yeah, one of these built in functions takes it. Okay. Uh, anyway, I feel like this doesn't actually do anything interesting. Let's stick to here. Display game state. Take a tuple of ints and a game and return an element. Oh, within a height. Okay. And then a game. But scores have type element. Scores is two string of player score. Garage. Game width. Game height. Oh, does this new thing give me documentation? Because that would be awesome. Damn. Uh. I need to set up dash later. Please coming Ben to make a pun. <laughs> you fuckers. <laughs> um, you can log into Twitch chat through our C client. Please coming to that. So that's funny. And that's awesome. How do I do that? Uh, that'd be cool. Um, I'm not going to open my IRC client right now, though. Who knows what's in there? I'm not going to share that with the world. I idle in some channels where some crazy stuff goes down. All right. Let's look at collage real quick, just to see what that is. Do I have Dash already purchased, possibly? Would this be that easy? Could it be? Could be. Who knows? I'm guessing yes. I don't know, let's see. Updated February 7th, hold on. Uh, don't read my password. Oh, really? I have Alan Docs and Dash. Alan, somebody's done it. Someone has done it. How do we done do it? Uh, yeah, let's download some. Uh, dash set. 
Elm. Boo! Okay, more nice sets. Oh, is, am I not in dash three? Is there a newer, is there a better dash that I need? What version am I on? Yeah, three to two. Where'd you get your docs? Elm dash docs. Hmm, hello. It's under user contributed. How do you install it? Read me. Uh, Jesus. Uh, third party sources. Ah, oh, hello. Warning. They might suck. Jesus, people. I live near a hospital. This is promising. Hello, Elm. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, I've never clicked down there. I can click that here. All right, clash. What is this? Ew. Why? Ew. Why did you make my beautiful I guess that might be nice, but I don't know. I think I already purchased this. Yeah. Oh, you can see behind me because of that window and that mirror. Oh, how about that? Okay. Quick collage of certain dimensions of contact takes a width and a height. Argument to specify dimensions and a list of 2D forms to describe the content. But I don't have to write this because I don't want to think about any of that. This play movable ball, this play movable players, this play movable player. This is an oval, this is a rect. Kind of get it. A filled pong green, filled with pong green, a rect game with game height. I'm guessing this is the paddle? No, probably not. Oh, rect game with, oh, this is the, this is the court. See, I would also have extracted this stuff too. Like, on court. Right? Who's with me? Court equals build. Track stuff, you know? Split usable ball. I guess we this probably comes in order, right? You start with the court and then you layer the stuff on top of it. Two form scores. Pike move zero. What was zero? Oh, it was two full game height. Sort of holy magic constants. Gee, there are magic numbers everywhere. Two form is state equals play, then space. Form. Come on! This is hard to read. You need to enter the license thing, it'll make you wait. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it compiles. So, theoretically, we might have a game. Is there anything else that this has that we don't have? Uh, oh, we don't have that, do we? This has changed slightly. Spacer? God, helicopters. <sighs> that's it, Pong and Elm. Well, bullshit, that's it. Does it work? I could be more impressed. Maybe I need the Elm reactor, maybe. Reactor. What's up, Pong Elm? Uh, Okay, I mean, yeah, looks pretty good. Need the main function, Ben. Hmm. Oops. Main. Yeah, how about that? Thank you. Seems important. Signal map two, display window dimensions. We gotta look at that, does too. That'd be cool. Oh my god! Hmm. <laughs> uh, I guess that I was 
starts in that direction, huh? So I think it's <laughs> safe to say our um, collision detection is not 100% working. <laughs> Close enough. We can do better. All right. Well, this will be a, a fun adventure of how do you debug a thing. Um, uh, let's, before we do this, oh god, get reset. Uh, Elm stuff. It's a very approachable name. Did you leave off the not and the ball off screen function? Oh my gosh. You might be right. Uh, screen, screen, hmm, off. Ball off court. Maybe this little fancy, fancy, fans didn't work. Um, I think it kind of did. Um, oh, why did you refuse my connection? Shit. What? I think it's in the or or and ball at top or bottom of the core will pass in true for both arcs if one is true. Oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, oh, this is not. That does not appear to be a better. Oh shoot. Uh, so. All at top or bottom of courts. Right. This was definitely one of the things we fiddled with. Uh, and youth. Sorry, I lost the chat. Shit, what did it say? Uh, um, I cleared the chat accidentally. God damn it, Twitch. What do I do here? So step B wants two bulls. Oh, I see why this had different names because, or maybe it didn't, collision. So we change the X if it collides with the player, so we change the Y if it collides with the thing. Uh, step B gets true true instead of true false. X works because the score is increasing. Yeah. Uh, ball at top or bottom of court? Can we just do ball at top of court? Ball, ball at bottom of court, ball. This is, I think, supposed to be that, and this is, I think, supposed to be that. Uh, yes! Woo! Uh, oh, hold on, Vimium. 
it's not Vimium. Oh, oh. Do Dvorak and Cordy with this. All right, we're gonna change WS. This is not working for me. Uh, last. Well, first of all, victory. We did it. Awesome. It's exciting. Uh, we pong. Still don't have anywhere to push to. Uh, hub create elm pong. Push. Now you may all have the code. Enjoy. All right. Now let's ask Dash what Laz does. You know. Just like the arrow signal, but it uses WSD, which are common controls for making video games. That's a nice little default, I gotta say. But I have an idea. Oh, you know what would be interesting? Uh, glad you didn't clean it, Ben. I'd be super frustrated that you're broken from me and probably quit. Yeah! Uh, now I'll be Counter Strike. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that seems like a, a very logical next step. It's interesting that the ball always goes that way now. I guess the problem is my, uh, whoa, whoa, how is that happening? Oh boy. I don't know how that happened. You could at least make it say wrecked when you score. Uh, I certainly could. That's a pretty cool idea. This is Twitch after all. Um, so, the scores, two form scores. I think the game head over T minus 40. So, oh, shoot. I gotta go. Oh man, I'm gonna be late for a thing. Well, uh, this has been super fun. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'm going to be super late for a thing because I'm kind of dumb. I got distracted by how awesome Elm is. This has been fun. Keep it real. Bye.